Hello, and thank you very much. I am a student who's getting ready to graduate in five weeks with a music business sound engineering emphasis. And I'm also an opera singer and, and do voiceover, so I'm curious how much there is a crossover with you guys as an entire uh, team um, for the artists who do the speaking voiceovers with um, pig sounds and, and as well as the music making. How much crossover is there? I'll start off. To, yeah. um, as I kind of alluded to earlier, um, way before we even get into the studio, uh, when we're in the casting process, it, actually before casting, when I'm working with the dev teams and we're talking about voices, I do uh, pull up the kind of music work in progress. Again, before we even find our actors and start working on that, I want to hear what they're doing. I want to hear, you know, because I'm really into music, I love sound, and so when I hear their work in progress, it really sets the tone. It sounds kind of goofy, but I really do get into my headspace, even when I'm if I'm gonna go through auditions, let's say I get in hundreds for each character that we do, before I even review the auditions, I will sit at my desk with headphones on and really listen to what they're working on musically. Because it really, you know, anybody who loves music knows you just get those sounds in your head and you're in a different place. So for me, for my part of it, I really do, you know, and it's especially clear, hard for me, not hard, but because I work on Star 2 and WOW, it's important that I do listen to their assets because I need to clear my head of WOW clear my head of Star 2 and really readjust and get into the D3 world. So hence, I, I really rely on their music a lot to get me there so I can find the perfect voices for our characters. So in that way, that's how I collaborate. You also uh, worked with a really, uh, well, I, actually we all worked with a really incredible voice actor named uh, Dee Baker who can make the most unhuman sounds. And actually, uh, I believe the sound designers were directing those sessions, yes? Well, uh, D. Baker did some work prior to me uh, working at Blizzard uh, for the Fallen family that Joseph can probably talk about a little bit. Well, D. Uh, D. is an amazing talent. He can he can stand in front of you and make noises with his mouth that don't sound like they're coming from a human, and it's kind of scary. He he'll put objects in his mouth. He'll put his fingers in his mouth. He will do whatever it takes to make a really strange noise and. Uh, it's just amazing working with him because he'll, he's game for anything and uh, he can just about pull anything off. It's, it's really quite stunning. So that's that crossover between, uh, you know, found sounds make, you know, for creatures and then using the power of the human voice. And I suggest you uh, maybe hunt his name down on YouTube because if you can find s some footage of him doing his thing, it's, it's mind blowing. Uh, or uh, I think, is he in the collector's edition DVD Yes, he video? is. You'll see him right. in the collector's edition. Excellent. I love your shirt, by the way. Thank you very, much. very cool. Next. We have right. a few more questions. Uh, first of all, thank you guys all so much for making um, sounds an experience unto itself in the games. I really appreciate it. Uh, this question is for the composers. How much do you balance collaboration between each other um, on your own individual pieces in the game, starting through the conceptual phase through all the way to the finished product? Well, um, I think we, we all have complementary talents. There's some overlap of our areas of speciality, but uh, there are certain, so we do uh, some internal casting that uh, you know, maybe one person tends to do the more heavy stuff or maybe someone does the more humorous stuff. Um, but we also have to contend with the fact that uh, Blizzard's a real busy studio, so sometimes it comes down to which one of us is available. So some... Uh, magic formula of the right person for, for the right job based on our individual strengths uh, and our availability uh, because there's always a wow patch to work on and of course uh, Heart of the Swarm's coming so we, we, t we talk a bit amongst ourselves quite often we, we try and get together whether it's in the hallway or, or structured meetings but whether it's a year before the next wow expansion you know we might have some you know, some conversations about that, whether it's for, you know, the next StarCraft II. We're, we're always talking about things like that, or even in a team meeting where, you know, we're talking about all sound-related things. Music, I, musical ideas come up, so we, we just try and keep the conversation open. It was also clear on this one that it made great sense to bring Lawrence in because we wanted to explore 
things that we didn't know guitars or related instruments could do. And uh, I think Lawrence spent half his income on this game uh, on crazy new instruments. Yeah, I, I got into some, uh, some really interesting things just to, you know, especially like the hammer dulcimer and stuff like that to get all that, that, that extra dimension in the texture. But I gather my next job is to give guitar lessons to a pig. Is that the, uh, <laughs> is that the plan? And, you, I, and I was kidding. You don't have to ever twist a guitar player's arm to buy more gear. Next. This is still going to be our last question. Um, so to start off, when you're, uh, <clears throat> sorry. when you were doing the Wrath of Lich King, there is one sound in the Nexus. It's for the soundtrack. It, was pulled straight out of Age of Empires 3, and I love that. Because I heard this iconic sound, I think it was like spawning some unit, and it, it perfectly matched with the music, and it just gave me kind of nostalgia for other old games that are also just fantastic. It, you guys you know, were right in the same level of, if not better. And my question is, when you're doing layering, especially the uh, music layering for battles versus just ambient, how do you structure that? Like, what's your theory behind it so that it's not going to be too jarring and not too uh, impossible for them to work through and keep going on the level? Well, I guess there's different approaches in the different IPs to, in, uh, in Diablo 3, since we're talking about that, uh, there's only, there's, there's one boss fight right now in the, in the beta, and that's a Skeleton King. What you'll find in the, in the approach to a lot of the boss music is it's more of a game component where it's meant to to increase the tension and in increase the anxiety of fighting the boss rather than like no 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 you better hit you know we're gonna get the boss we're gonna it's it's more like you know oh no the boss is coming here it is you know it's it's more like oh man that, can't somebody turn the music off it's confusing me I I kill the skeleton king <laughs> so it's 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 just the context that the game places for us calls for a certain approach, a certain kind of music that makes any sort of sense in my crazy way. Everyone, we have to close. I wanted to say again, thank you so much for coming. We really appreciate it. And keep playing Blizzard games. <laughs> Enjoy Diablo 3 very soon. Trademark, patent pending.